at work. Uh, more on that after this, but let's go to the site in Virginia, heading up our coverage there. Chris Matthews, Chris. Ryan, I thought it was very illuminating. I thought that Mike Pence did all the things right that Donald Trump did wrong. His body language was excellent. He was very good on reaction. He looked like a grown-up every time, whatever his words were. And, of course, he was playing with a couple deuces against a guy with a full house, so it was very difficult for him in terms of the issues. I mean, he had to defend Donald Trump. But he came across as a grown-up, strong. I thought he was very effective at being a conservative. But I really think he accomplished tonight has made himself probably the front-runner for the Republican nomination in 2020. He hit all the bases on the conservative side. He was pro-life and rather eloquent on it at the end. You may not agree with him, but he was eloquent. I also thought that he was very good on the policing issue for the conservative side, very strong against illegal immigration on the conservative side. So he really didn't work the suburbs for Trump. He worked his right-wing flank. I thought he was very effective at securing uh, Trump's right-wing flank. And I think that may be important in the numbers the next couple of days to stop this uh, hemorrhaging of Trump, to hold him on the right and hold him on the conservative side. On the other hand, I thought at times, and I liked the guy, Kane was a little bit, I don't know what the right word is, a little desperate there, jumping in all the time, uh, always trying to get his points, and he didn't wait his turn. Obviously, the, if he had just waited his turn, in the back and forth nature of this kind of event, he would have had his opportunity. I don't know why he kept interrupting, because with two people debating, the other guy gets the chance to speak. He couldn't wait for that, and I think that hurt him. He, on the other hand, he hit all the, uh, he hit all the points, all the erogenous zones of the Democratic coalition. He hit the minorities. He hit immigrants, illegal immigrants, whatever. He hit everybody. He hit uh, uh, Israel a couple of times. He went for Israel. That's a good one. So what he did was hit all the bases of the Democratic Party coalition, made them all feel that somebody's looking out for them. But oh, Overall, I think the winner tonight will end up being, in terms of the debate and what they were trying to accomplish, Pence, because Pence really was solid. He looked like he had his head screwed on, and I think that's going to look very important for Trump. He doesn't often look like he has his head screwed on. I think Chris, it was very important for him to look like a grown-up. Chris, can I ask you a question about how you think this is going to play in days ahead? I was struck by the fact that... Um, both Donald, one of the things that Donald Trump did last week was that he said, I didn't say that, I didn't say that, I didn't say that. That let the Clinton campaign spend the next three or four days pointing out all of the things he actually did say, playing the tape, keeping that debate going and sort of fact-checking him on that easy to fact check stuff for three or four days. Mike Pence did his own version of that tonight, saying Trump uh, didn't say that, Trump didn't say that, Trump didn't say that, on a lot of things that Trump did say. Does that mean that they're going to be sort of at risk of the next few days not going as well for them as tonight may have. Well, you're right. I think in terms of fact-checking, that's always a second and third day story. But, you know, it's not as big. We have, what, I'll bet it's 40,000 people watch tonight, 30-some, maybe up to 40 watch tonight. They'll watch. They're not going to be checking on the fact-checking like you and I will. Hmm. I think among the Conus Senti, who watch the, pay, watch the uh, television programs like ours that read the paper and care, but you know this campaign's not about particular facts. It's about attitude. And the Trump attitude is not conservative exactly. It's almost revolutionary against the establishment. On the other hand, I think that uh, Mr. Cain tonight, Senator Cain, was very much a regular Democrat, like Hillary Clinton, like Walter Mondale, like Dukakis, like all the rest of them. He has defended the Democratic coalition effectively tonight. I thought he was very good on choice. He made all the points we like to hear. I don't think, uh, I don't think he moved anybody. I would just say that the effect of tonight over the next couple of days, despite the facts, and I know they're important to journalists, Despite the facts, I think he gives some uh, shoring up of what was a, a what was definitely a strong shift toward Hillary Clinton. I think he shored it up tonight, and I think that Trump is going to be very happy with his performance. And again, I'm going to tell you, he wasn't so much running as a running mate tonight. He was offering himself as a future leader of the conservative party of this country, not the Trump party, the conservative party. I think he is now the guy, and you're going to hear this from a lot of conservative blogs tonight and tomorrow. He's their guy right now on the ticket. He's the conservative that they like. All right, Chris Matthews, uh, thanks. I have a number of all-stars waiting to get in this game, uh, including but not limited to Steve Schmidt, Eugene Robinson. We also have James Carville uh, watching along with us out in Arizona. James, your assessment of what you just witnessed. Well, I think, I think that Pitt's objective was to attack Hillary, which would endear him to the conservatives.